Welcome to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. Shalom and welcome to Unstoppable Faith. Uh, this is your doc, Dr. Kazumba Charles. I'm so excited you have joined us today and you've been, uh, you know, blessed by this program that we've been bringing to you. Uh, we made the transition recently from uh, uh, Kingdom Insight uh, to Unstoppable Faith. So I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We'll be bringing you a lot of different uh, perspective on, um, on, uh, on faith and uh, the, the importance of it, the dynamics of it. It. And we have found out something very important in terms of our faith. You begin to understand that, you know, when I was young, uh, or during those days, we were told faith was something that you have to obtain something from God. But uh, my goal and my desire and my passion uh, on Unstoppable Faith is to be able to inspire you and uh, to help you understand the dynamics of faith in terms of faith is what we need to live for God even when you don't see what you need from God because in today's world many people believe God for what they can obtain from God and uh, sometimes when we don't get what we need from God it becomes uh, very discouraging we become discouraged we become uh, you know um, uh, our passion dies out, our vision dies out. So my goal is to help you to understand the importance of our faith, the dynamics, the, dip, the, the, de the depth of it, and what God desires in our lives to have. So I'm going to go to the book of Hebrews. Let's begin in the book of Hebrews. And we're going to read the book of Hebrews. And on today's program, we're going to look at uh, the difference between faith and hope. What is the difference between faith and hope? Hope is good. Uh, faith is uh, the depth of uh, believing God, even when you don't see that which you believe in God. And we are just in that season that needs us, the people of God, to begin to believe God, even when we don't see that which we believe in God for. So let's look at um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh, uh, the evidence of things not seen. So meaning, faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you have hope, then you must have the depth of uh, faith. To sustain you. Now, here is, let's look at our first the definition of the word faith. I think when we understand, if we just say faith, faith, many people say, wow, well, faith, faith, then what is faith? Uh, Hebrews explains to us, it is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But here, the Greek word used here for faith, which is called uh, pistis. Pistis simply means uh, reliance on, or persuasion, or persuaded, or a strong conviction. So hope is hoping for something. You hope. I hope one day I'll get married. I hope one day I will have that which I'm looking for. I hope one day my life changes. I hope one day my circumstance changes. But faith is believing today. Faith is in the now. I have faith my circumstance and my situation is changing right now. I have faith my situation or oh God is working on my behalf to change my circumstance. Now let's look here. So if you look at pistis, it uh, really just means, uh, you know, the, the pistis, the word for faith, uh, uh, means uh, reliancy, total dependency on God, or persuasion, or persuaded, or a strong conviction in God and in the Word of God. So many of us develop and establish hope. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, 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 but the problem is that we develop and establish hope more than we develop and establish faith 
in our lives, which is a total dependence on God. God, what He says and what He speaks, He does not change. You have to understand this. Faith is a strong conviction on what God has spoken that does not change. Meaning, you are persuaded to believe God. You have a strong conviction what God has spoken is going to do it. The Bible says, the Bible says, God's word does not go back to him void. What he says, he does it. When God speaks, he establishes. It may take a long time. Now, here's the thing. If you, what you have is hope, and you, believe, you begin to believe for something or you are hoping for something to happen and it takes longer than you expected. Have you ever heard people say, my hope has gone? So hope can disappear if all you have is only hope. But faith stands the test of time. Faith, even if it is delayed, it stands the test of time. Faith does not get dashed off. Your hopes may be dashed off. You see people say, oh, he lost hope. Why? The person was believing for something and it did not happen, so his hope died. But faith does not die. Why? Because the faith is a strong, strong dependency on the Word of God. Faith is a strong dependency on the Word of God. With faith, we know we got what God wants us to have. So here is what I want to I, I, I share with you. Many of us, we have more hope in our lives and little faith in God's ability to do what He only can do. Hope is good, but not good enough to take us where God wants us to. To go where God wants you to go, takes it takes faith. To leap off and jump into your destiny, or grab hold of your destiny, or step into your destiny, it requires you to have unstoppable faith. Why? Because your hopes may be going. Why? You're not seeing where you're going. Have you ever driven? In a, in a foggy, foggy uh, season or when there is a lot of uh, snow and the visibility is really bad, you can't even see where you're going. Uh, I've been in one of those uh, uh, driving, going to Toronto, uh, driving on 401. And uh, as you're driving, you're following somebody, you can't really see where you're going. But you're going somewhere. If you go slowly, you're going somewhere. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, you get to another place where you begin to see the visibility changes. Now you can see everything. That's how faith is. Faith does not give you a clear visibility. Faith does not give you a clear destination. Faith does not give you a clear map of where you're going. Why? Because a faith rooted in God lets God be the driver and you just the follower of where God is leading you. I'll give you an example of Abraham. When God said to Abraham, go into the nation I'm sending you. You know what Abraham did? Abraham did not ask the details. In our humanity, we'll ask God, where Where's my paycheck going to come from? How am I going to feed my children? How am I going to pay for this? That is good because you're thinking of how it's going to pan out. But with God, God just says, trust me, step out and go. And in the kingdom of God, we begin to understand the currency of living in the kingdom of God and serving God without being shaken, without being moved, it requires you to have faith in God's ability in what He only can do, and that is to take you where He says He will take you. He does not offer the blueprint for you to go through with it. So here is what happens. If all you have is hope, 
you may be going through that uh, foggy, snowy, no visibility uh, uh, situation in your life. And then you begin to see, you can't see where you're going. You can't see your destination. Your hope may start losing. Your hope may start fading. Your hope may start be, you know, uh, uh, being taken away. Why? Because now your patience is in there because your hope is being tested by the storms of your life. Your hope is being tested by the difficulties of the things that is in front of you. But faith plows through anything and everything. So let's get back to the word here. And the thing I want you to understand is to understand the difference. Hope is good, but hope is not good enough to take you through the storms of life. Life is full of storms. Life is full of challenges. And to serve in the kingdom of God, Jesus wanted his disciples to develop unshakable faith. They needed to know who he was, and he told them, if you go somewhere to preach and they don't welcome you, shake the dust off of your feet and go to another city. Why? Because the faith says, I will not give up. In our last episode, I shared with you uh, uh, the woman who wanted the judge to give her justice. She went to the judge the first time. The judge could not give her justice at all. Again, she went to the judge and she pleaded for justice. And Jesus was trying to tell his disciples uh, uh, about being persistent in that which he has called us. How about being persistent in worshiping God? Being persistent in glorifying God? Being persistent in serving God? Being persistent and committed to this Jesus? Because there will be scenes and things that are going to tempt you away from God. If all you have is hope, let me tell you something, you won't hold on. But if you have unshakable uh, uh, faith that is established in who God really is, no circumstance, no situation can move you away from the love of God. Not even death can take you away from the love of God. Not even failure can pull you away from serving God. You see, serving God is full of challenges. Even just being as a minister, uh, uh, proclaiming the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ, it is not an easy task because the enemy co continues to do what to try and pull us away from God. But when we have faith in God and faith in the word of God, there is nothing the enemy can do to pull us away from God. So here is the difference between hope and having, I mean, between faith and hope. Now, faith is different from hope. I'm not saying you shouldn't have hope. Actually, your hope should lead you to faith in God because you are hoping for something. You remember the scripture we read? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So your hope should lead you to faith. Your faith should lead you to believing God without being shaken, without being immoved. You become immoved by any circumstance and situation you may encounter. So faith is different from hope. Having hope is not the same as having faith. But both are good. They complement each other. And both are incredible. But faith Faith is what is going to anchor your faith on the Word of God, anchor your, 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 your desire to serve God. Even in the most difficult situation, you still stick closer to the Word of God. So here, many of us usually operate and uh, hope more than we operate and uh, faith. And here's the reason. We are hopeful for our circumstance to change. That is good. But faith says this. I have faith. My circumstance and my situation is changing now. Why? Because I serve the God who is a God of today. He is a God of today. He is a God of now. So here, uh, having hope is not the same as having faith. Let me take you to Romans chapter 5 verse 13. Here's what Romans 15, sorry, 15 verse 13 says. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you believe, your hopes 
begins to rise up. Why? You have faith in you. And that faith is telling you it will happen. It may take a long time. It may take long, I mean, many years. But it will happen. Why? That is what faith says. Because a faith rooted in the Word of God. And the Word of God cannot disappoint you. You've heard the term, man changes. You know, man can change, but God does not change. He does not change what he has spoken. He does not change his love concerning you. He does not change his desires and promises concerning you. He does not change that which he says he will do for your life. That's why it is incredible to have faith. I may be struggling today. I may not have money today. I may have, uh, you know, maybe sickness today. But I have, ho I, mean, I have faith in God's power and in God's ability to change every situation, to turn every circumstance for my own good. That is what faith speaks. Faith is that powerful. So here we begin to see the difference between hope and faith is that hope is always in the future. You know, hope is always in the future and it points us to the future. For example, we hope God one day changes our nation. We hope one day God touches my family. I hope one day God heals us or he heals my friend or he heals my parents. That is good. That is a hope. We should have hope. But do you know faith? Faith has a different language. Faith has a different language. Faith says this, I have faith my parents are healed today in Jesus' name. I have faith my circumstance is changing right now. I'll never be the same. Why? I serve the God of all power. So hope is great if it is based on God's unchanging character. God unchanging character. So when I have hope, I have hope in the God who never changes. What he says, he does it. That brings me now to faith. So I'm going to be hopeful today. But you know what I am? I am, I am surely, surely standing on. It is the faith. My hope is motivated by the power of the faith of believing in what God is capable of doing. Let's look at another example here. Hope is great. But it's, it is not what? It is not faith. So hope is not faith. But it is great. It is great. But it is not faith. And here's what I want you to see. Hope can give us the confidence to go through something. But only faith will give us assurance. Are you getting the, the picture there? Hope can give you the confidence. My circumstance one day will change. Oh, I will overcome this. So now, guess what I have? I have now hope. So I have confidence. But here's what faith does. Faith, not only does it give you the confidence, it gives you the assurance. It will surely happen. It will surely take place. What did God tell Habakkuk? In the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was complaining. He was complaining about the situation in the, in the, you know, uh, the situation the children of Israel were encountering. And God told uh, 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 Habakkuk and he said, uh, write down your vision. Write down your vision. Even though it may take longer, it will come to pass. So a vision can take longer, but if you have faith in the God that gave you the vision, you can stick closer to the vision he has given you and to the plan. You see, many people have dreams. Many people have a passion. Many people have, a, you know, the desire to do something incredible. But I tell people this. Everybody has a desire and a passion to serve God until they encounter the storms of life. Because the storms of life will try to shake you off, to shake your passion and your desire to serve God. That's what the storms does. Uh, you know the devil? Satan knows what he's after. The devil is after your faith in God. The devil is after your faith and your trust in God. You remember the story of Job in the book of Job? Job had everything. 
Job owned everything he could. He, he, he was rich. God had made him fruitful. But you know what the enemy said to God? He told God, actually, the enemy went and accused Job before God. And here's what the enemy said. Who wouldn't worship you when you have blessed them so much? You see, who wouldn't worship you, God? If you have blessed Job with a law, with prosperity, he is prospered, he has everything that he needs. Who wouldn't worship you? But God bragged over his servant Job because he understood Job did not love God for what God could give to him. Job loved God for who God really is. He is Yahweh. He is Adonai. He is Elohim. He is a good God. He is a gracious God. So Job believed and loved God for who God is and not for what God could give him. Men of us, trust God, love God for what we can obtain from God. That is not faith because here's what the enemy is going to do. The devil will come and temper with what you have or he may cause you to lose everything you love. Then would you worship God? I say this. You have not worshipped God and you have not served God if you can't serve when you have nothing to serve him for. When you haven't seen that which you are desiring. So Job, even when the devil went and touched everything that Job had, and in chapter 2 of the book of Job, the Job's wife told Job, why don't you curse God and die? And Job said this, and that was the, you know, the, the focal point of that account was this. The devil wanted Job to denounce God. Why? Because Job had lost everything that he owned. But Job refused to curse God. Why? Because Job did not love God for what God had given to him. Job loved God for who God is, the creator, the God of all power, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God. When you fall in love with God, you are not falling in love with what he can give to you. You fall in love for who he is. He created you. He has taken care of you. And that, my friend, that is what it takes to run with God and to serve in the kingdom of God. So here we begin to see hope gives us the confidence to go through something. But only faith will give us an assurance that things are changing right now in our lives by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, the goodness of hope. Let me give you the goodness of hope. Uh, I, and, I, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have hope. I don't want to me, you to, me, uh, to misinterpret what I'm trying to say here. You should have hope. But your life should be rooted in what? In the power of your faith to God. You remain faithful to God because you have faith in the ability, in what God has spoken over your life. So here is, in, in, you know, you, you can see that the word of God, hope is good. You can see that in Psalms 31 verse 24. Hope is good, but hope is not what? Is not faith. Uh, uh, faith is something deeper. Faith is something uh, on another level. We, we read Hebrews 11 verse 1. What does it say? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is complete trust or putting our confidence in God. Faith is the heart's response to God's character. God's character does not change. What he says, he will do. We sometimes, as human beings, we are impatient. We want things to happen right now. In our studio here, with one of our own, you know, um, uh, members of our team, Andrea, I love her so much. And we were, you know, she was telling me, she said, hey, Doc, you need to have patience. Because we were trying to get some things going. I said, I don't like patience because you know what? I want things to happen right now. It's our human nature. There's nothing wrong with that. But we need to be reminded, God works at his own time frame. God works at his own time frame. We can't manipulate God to do what we want him to do on our behalf. God will always do what he says he will do concerning our lives at a time when he knows we have reached to that level that, that he could uh, entrust us and trust us with more.
So if you haven't seen what you want to see today, keep moving forward, keep praising God, keep serving God. The rest will come. Why? God is... He could be molding your character. He could be preparing you for something bigger. You see, many people, they say, are many people that wins the lottery. They go bankrupt within a few years. You know why? Because uh, they were praying for this money and they get these millions. And they did not have the plans for millions. And here's the money now they begin to spend it without saving or without investing anywhere. Uh, before the year's ends, they are back to square one. Why? Because they wanted something just like that. Faith is actually God trying to train us in his character. So faith honors God. Faith honors God and God honors faith. When you remain faithful to God, God will honor you. Faith honors God, and God honors faith. We'll be looking at uh, men and women in the Bible that did incredible things by having faith in God's word, and they refused to turn to the enemy. They refused to let their spirit be corrupted. They remained faithful to God. So faith stands for full assurance in the heart and not in the mind. You see, in our mind, we put our hope. I have hope. I'm telling my mind, hey, come on, you can get through this. But faith is a heart thing. It's in your heart. It is ingrained in you, and it will never depart. You believe God for everything he has spoken, because God is not a man who should lie. What he has said concerning your life, he will do it. He will deliver it. It may take longer. Wait for it. Here, faith is total dependency on God. When we have faith, we are depending on him to sustain us, to bring deliverance, to bring change, and to bring everything that he desires. As we begin to wind our program for today, I just want to leave you with some few things and some few thoughts for you to get here. Faith is for now. Faith is for today. I don't know what situation you may be going through. I don't know what is going on in your life. But I'm not saying also that you are going through that because uh, you don't have enough faith. That is absolutely not true. You know, faith is simply saying, I will not change my mind. I will stand on what God has said. I will stand on what God has spoken. I will not change my mind just because I don't see what I need to see. So with faith, we believe now that God is changing my situation. Whatever you're going through, believe right now by faith. Look, salvation comes by faith. We, we place our faith in what Jesus did. 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, he paid the price for our sins. That's why we have faith, and that's how we receive salvation. Through his grace, we believe. We believe today God is healing my parents, is healing my friend. We believe today God is restoring my life. Hebrew thought to have faith is in God, sorry, is not only knowing that God exists or knowing that he will act on your behalf. Rather, it is uh, that the one with faith will act with firmness or persuasion or stability toward God's will. It is God's will to heal. It is God's will to deliver. It is God's will to set the captives free. It is God's will to prosper his people. Why? That is what faith stands for. Faith, it is just not being moved by what is in front of you. In this season, as we live in the kingdom of God, that is what God desires us to have, to have faith in his ability and in what he desires to do. I just want to pray for you and pray with you and stand with you before we end the bro today's broadcast. Father, I declare that whatever my sister and my brother they are going through today, we declare total deliverance and total salvation and breakthrough. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. If you've been impacted or blessed by this program, please email your testimony or prayer request to life at kazumbacharles.com.